Hey buddies, Subnuts Guy here. Today we're going to be going through 10 intermediate level tips and tricks for RL craft that'll hopefully help you get ahead. I also am currently running an RL craft community server over on Twitch. So if that's something that you guys would be interested in joining, you'd be welcome to do so. The Twitch link will be in the description below. Drop by and say hi. Alrighty, let's go. Really quickly before we get started, my last video dragged on a little bit longer than intended, so we're going to try and keep this one a bit more concise, just give you the tips as they are, and we're not going to be going through things like the recipes. Because I'm going to give you a bonus tip, tip number zero, which is that you can search for any item in the game in this menu here. And you can cliff, uh, left click on it to find out how to build it, or you can right click on it to find out what you can build with it, which is pretty cool. So we're not going to be going through recipes. We're just going to be telling you about the things and you can search it up through here if you need to. So into tip number one, atlases. You can craft an item called an empty antique atlas. And if you hold this item on you while you're exploring, it will serve as a permanent map, which you can put markers on. And it's uh, actually pretty cool, super duper helpful. And uh, that'll help you along the way. Now with atlases, they're quite, uh, you know, the information is quite important. So what you can do is you can combine an empty atlas with an existing atlas with information on it, and it will duplicate that atlas. These two atlases are now linked, and any information that appears on one will also appear on the either, both current and new information. So you can store one of these in your inventory, take one out with you, and if you do lose this for whatever reason, you can always take this one out and they'll be exactly the same at all times. Tip two, the summoning staff. The summoning staff is a very easy item to get early game, and it can be very, very powerful in comparison to how weak you are early game, help you to complete battle towers and things like that much easier than if you're doing it on your own. When you pull out your summoning staff, you'll see you gain an additional bar above your food, and that acts as your mana. If you hold down the right click, it will use your mana to summon creatures. You can hold it down to summon multiple, and different creatures will take different amounts of mana per summon. Your mana will accrue over time, and you can choose what you summon via the summoning screen. Here you can choose what you can summon. It shows you how much it costs, which are these orange dots, and you can set up an action bar. If I place individual summons here, I can then press the Z or Z key, and I can access quick the hotbar for the summons here, and it's very, very strong, very, very good to use, very, very cheap to get. Tip three, the summoning pedestal. The summoning pedestal is a really strong item that constantly summons creatures that fight for you at the location that you place the pedestal. If you right click on it, you can choose the creature that you summon. I saw often summon Aegises, or Aegis, Aegises, and it's powered with redstone and it can summon up to an X amount of creatures dependent on what you're choosing to be summoned. And this is its max capacity. It's really good to bring these to uh, dungeons or for base defense. Tip four, get yourself a flying mount. A flying mount it will change the game and make it so much more enjoyable for you. And a rock is a good first start. No, I don't mean get a pet rock, R-O-C-K, a rock, R-O-C. It's a avian lycanite mob, and it is a early, easy to get uh, flying mount. You'll need avian treats, or if you're going for something else, you'll need the corresponding treat, as well as a soul stone. To tame something, you feed it the treat, and it says it wants more, it says it wants more, until it says it has fallen in love with you. Once it loves you, it has been tamed. However, if it dies, it's gone forever. What you'll need to do after taming is apply a soul stone, you know, as if you were feeding it, right clicking on it. And that will bind it to your soul so that when you're opening your summoning window, 
You can then summon it. You can set it to passive, defensive, or aggressive. You can have it follow you. You can have it sit. And I would recommend to have flying mounts uh, to be passive and sit so that it's easy to get onto it. So if I summon it, it stays right there. It's easy to get on and off. Happy days. And it honestly makes life so much easier. So I think there's another buddy around here somewhere. We're going to show you how this looks in just a sec. All right, so we're now being chased by a rock. And we're going to show you what taming it looks like. It may try and pick you up, but that's OK. You just right click on it and first try. Happy days. The first food uh, I gave it, it says the rock seems to love you. Sometimes you need to do it three or four. The most I've had to do is six before it's tamed. But remember to soul stone it immediately so that it's now bound to your soul and you can now dismiss and resummon that pet. Tip five, I would recommend taming a lot of different creatures or it doesn't matter what creature they actually are because the reason you'll want them is for portable storage space. So if I have a bunch of creatures, we'll put these on sit for now so they don't go wandering off. If I have a bunch of tames, each one of these tames can hold a chest. And if you've given it a chest, it'll have storage space. Hey, look, there's a spare Paxel. And this storage will not disappear when you dismiss those creatures, as you've just seen because the Paxel was there as I summoned it. And it basically means that you can have a bunch of different creatures that will store different items for you, sometimes just for bringing loot out of dungeons. But I also have some specific pets that carry specific items for me, like potions or things like that. Tip six, the tool belt. The tool belt is a useful bobble that will allow you to carry multiple tools without taking up many inventory slots. It's a bobble that slots into your belt slot here and by default, it has two spaces within it, which means that if you press your tool belt hotkey, which can be found in controls all the way near the bottom under tool belt, and I've rebound mine. So when you press that button, it'll open a radial menu, allowing you to insert or remove weapons from that tool belt. It does have two slots by default, so you can store multiple tools in there. However, you can also upgrade this by applying a tool belt with a belt pouch in an anvil. This will upgrade the number of slots so you can carry even more items in your tool belt. And I've just thrown it on the floor, but I think you get the point. Tip seven, potion ring of resistance. This ring is fantastic to get both early and to keep late game because you can wear two of them and each one will give you the resistance buff, which means you will resist 20% of damage that is done to you. That's right, 20% damage reduction. Stacking up to two times, you'll see we see resistance two now. So that means I'm resisting 40% of damage done to me. A very, very good item to get as soon as you can in RL craft. Tip eight, Aussie Liner. Aussie Liner is your answer to dealing with temperature. Aussie Liner is adaptive and will change to cool you down if you're hot or heat you up if you're cold. You can find Aussie Liner at either dungeons or you can craft it. It's quite a chain of things that you need to craft to get to it, but you can find all of the information through this. And you can apply it to a chest piece or a leg piece. Well, you need one for either. I would recommend doing both. And that will produce the Aussie liner chess piece, which will make your life much easier when it comes to dealing with temperature. Tip nine, reforging armor and weapons. You can use a reforging station to reforge armor and weapons. Note that there are two reforging stations, one for baubles and one for armor and weapons. Today, we're focusing on the one on the right, which is for the armor and weapons. To reforge, you place the weapon or armor at the top and the resource to reforge it at the bottom. And you'll see that the quality at the bottom of the info on this item says vicious. Now, that's not terrible. There's definitely worse ones. But what we're aiming for is something like legendary, which is pretty fantastic. So once you've put your items in, you just click this button 
And you're basically gonna just gonna keep going using one resource per reforge until you get the quality that you want. Tip 10, the disenchantment table. This is pretty much the opposite of the enchanting table and will allow you to take enchantments off of both weapons and books with multiple enchantments on them. Note that it will only take the top enchantment off of a weapon or a piece of armor and it will destroy that item in the process. So in this case, it's got protection four at the top. If I place that there and place a book there, I'll get protection four, but I'll lose the item there. With books, it's slightly different. You can take all of the enchantments off the books, no problem. So you'd end up with three books with individual enchantments instead of your one book with three enchantments. Very, very useful and can help you make the most out of the items that you find in dungeons. Oof, I look tired. It's now late by the time that I finish wrapping this, uh, wrapping the recording up for this. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like, a comment, or, uh, you know, if you want to see more content like this, hit that subscribe button. We'll be doing more RL Craft Tips and Tricks videos. We'll be doing some Let's Plays of various games and all that beautiful stuff. So uh, I hope you all have a good day. Thanks again for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.